glad you could join me again today. We uh, did something different last time, asking you to memorize and meditate on Jude verses 20 and 21. If you haven't, that's okay, but we're going to talk about them today. Um, these are verses that I hear, uh, that I uh, received from the Lord a few years ago that mean a lot to me. And I want to share that with you today because they are very special to me and they can be very valuable to you. Here's what they say, Jude verses 20 and 21. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. These verses just um, came alive to me several years ago when I was just feeling like everything in my life was falling apart. I don't exactly remember what all was going on back then, but I do know that these verses became a comfort and instruction and a really solid anchor for me in a time of my life when I needed them. And I still hear them replay in my heart when I'm feeling low or when I need encouragement, even today. So let's talk about these verses just one section at a time. It starts off with, but ye beloved, beloved, someone who's precious. We are a child of God. We are a redeemed one. We are loved of God. And I have that special standing with Christ covered by his blood, a secure for eternity. And these two verses are written to me, but ye beloved, and they are written to you, if you know Christ is your Savior, you are the beloved, and he's writing to you. But ye, beloved, what a wonderful place to be. It starts off then with building up yourselves on your most holy faith. And we've talked about building, haven't we? Building those walls, building our castle, building our life. We talked about the atmosphere, and that also is a part of the building of our life. Keeping our walls solid and secure increasing our faith by study and use of the word, claiming the precious promises of God. All these things build our life. The victories that are assured of us in Christ give us those turrets, those flags that we can fly high so we can go from strength to strength instead of, instead of sitting down and losing hope. The next phrase says praying in the Holy Ghost and we could visit and visit on prayer. Because prayer is vital to our relationship with the Lord, to the strength that we need to be able to build, to the encouragement that we need to face the uncertain times, to the asking and seeking and knocking that we must do. We should be praying constantly, the Bible says. Pray continually with spirit-filled prayer. Not just those Lord help me prayers, but the ones that pray the precious promises of God and that claim truth and that work along with God, prayer that lifts us up, that gives us assurance, and that uh, motivates us to greater service. Prayer that enters the throne room and places our requests right before God himself. That effectual, fervent prayer, right, of a righteous man that avails much. In 2020, we really need to all be very active, effectual, fervent prayer warriors. And then the phrase next is, Keep yourselves in the love of God. And this is the phrase where God's Spirit rehearses into my heart so many times. Keep yourself in the love of God, Gail. Keep yourself there. No matter what anyone else is doing, no matter what's happening around you, no matter what foul attitude tempts you, keep yourself in the love of God. To me, that's telling me that I have a responsibility to keep my place. If I am one of the beloved and I have the love of God upon my life, I need to stay there. I need to do what it takes to participate with what God is doing. And when I'm tempted to, to give up or to allow a depression again to grab hold, I hear this phrase, keep yourself in the love of God. Now that word keep is a very interesting little word. It means to have charge of, to guard or protect, or to keep yourself in a state of, it also means to take care of or to attend to carefully. So isn't that beautiful? God is telling us to keep care or take care of ourselves, to guard and protect what we have, who we are. We are his child. He wants us to protect ourselves, to remain in a state of, 
to know our position in Christ and to stand there, to keep ourselves in the love of God. We're not to walk away. We're not to let our position slip. And that's exactly what I hear the Lord saying to me. I have to remember that I only answer to the God to God for me. I will not answer to God for you, and you will not answer to God for me. We answer for ourselves individually when we stand before him. And he's only going to ask us uh, what we did with the thing that he gave us, just like the the uh, the uh, landlord came and asked what they did with the talent. What did you do with the talent that I gave you? The gift that I gave you. I'm responsible for that one thing. And that one thing is me. I will answer for me. What did I do with the life that God gave me? Did I keep it safe? Did I guard and protect my life? Or did I throw it to the wolves? Did I disregard my significance in Christ and his price that he paid for my salvation? Did I tend carefully to my life, to my health, to my mental state, to my faith, my prayer life, my service, all the things that he's given me to take care of that, re that um, regard myself, that I am solely answerable for? Did I keep myself in the love of God in a place of blessing and protection? And the last phrase is looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So am I looking for his coming? Am I ready? I love 1 John 2, 28. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. I do not want to be ashamed when I stand before him. How about you? But I will be ashamed if I have not built my faith, if I've not maintained a faithful prayer life, if I've not cared for or kept myself in the love of God, or if like the foolish virgins, I have not been looking for and prepared for his coming. So let's listen to Jude 20, 21 one more time. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now that's a lot for us to do, right? We're supposed to be building, praying, keeping, and looking. But let's not stop there because just a couple of verses next is a wonderful little promise. It's in verse 24. It says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. And my heart rests there. There are days when I fail to build, when my prayers feel like they're falling flat, when my life falters and I forget to look up. But he keeps me. He guards and protects. He keeps me in a state there. He takes care of me. And that's what he's doing, protecting and guarding me because he is able to keep, that verse says. He is able to keep. And I am secure in his promise. Though I might falter, he will keep me from falling and he will present me faultless. That's amazing. I know my faults. I see them and the enemy loves to remind me of them. Doesn't he do the same thing for you? But God has us covered. He has us eternally secure by his promises and he will present us faultless before the throne with exceeding joy because he is able to keep us. And what a great day that would, will be. But ye beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, the verse goes on to say, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Keep yourself in the love of God, and I'll see you next time.